We got this 2005 Grand Cherokee. It came in because apparently the woman says she can't even get an oil change because it's leaking so much antifreeze that these oil change places won't do an oil change on it because they say get your antifreeze leak fixed first, which, yeah, I can agree with that. <laughs> uh, so anyway, pressure test at the system and it did not take long. So let me go ahead and get this back up to pressure for you guys. All right, there we have it. And you could hear all that mess. We have a busted radiator, guys. Well, let me confirm it's not the hose, but seeing that the car was in an accident on this side, I'm just gonna... Oh, there's not even a hose down there. So, <laughs> yeah, it's a busted radiator. The lower hose is on that side, not over here. All right, pretty easy diagnosis. So she said, while it's here, go ahead and look at anything else that it may need. So let me look over the car and we'll go from there. But as of right now, it needs a radiator. Now she said she also can't put any windshield fluid in it because it all leaks out, of course, because of this accident, it punctured uh, the container for that. So, but if you look at this piece of metal right here, it's like jammed in up against that container. Part of me wants to say, hey, yeah, we could get a new, uh, a new container and replace it. But then looking at this mess, I would have to deal with that destroyed metal and push the metal just to replace that tank. It's like, do I really want to deal with it? But that's a big issue because we're going into winter. And without that, all the salt's going to build up on your windshield. If you can't clean your windshield, you're, you're not driving. Yeah, and I'm not really surprised to see uh, what else is going on here. She said it's her boyfriend's car, that he doesn't maintain his cars. But since she's been driving it recently, she wants to get some of the work done. So, you know, I'm not surprised. Anyway, upper ball joint, so the upper control arm needs to be replaced. That ball joint is no good. Uh, the brakes need to be replaced. It looks like somebody kept pad slapping it, but the rotors are just done for. And then we have the whole wheel wobbling back and forth. And that's the outer tie rod. The ball joint on it is just completely, <laughs> it's bad. It's another one of those cars, again, don't go crazy. We cannot make an entire laundry list of everything it needs because it's never going to get done. It's just a waste of my time to look up parts, to look up pricing and all this stuff. It, it's a big waste of time. I'm going to point out the main things and then go from there. Pretty much the same exact problems on the front left side. All right, let's make a list of what it needs so that the car will only get 10% of that work done. So besides the container for the windshield fluid being busted, you can see the hose going to that nozzle over there has broken off. So someone just zip tied the whole thing out of the way and it's actually spraying this way. So even if the system did work how it's supposed to, when you push that button, it's going to spray the windshield fluid all over the battery. So obviously that needs to get addressed too if you want to get your windshield washing fluid working during the winter. All right, so it is about two or three weeks later, something like that. We have a brand new radiator for this Jeep. So I'm going to go ahead, yank the old one out and uh, just get this party started. Guys, I'm ooh, super excited today. You're probably wondering, hey, John, you extravagant, beautiful young man. Why are you so happy? Well, after a full year, I was able to get a PS5. Yes. <laughs> Those things are hard as hell to find. And I know, I know not everyone plays video games, but I do. Uh, granted, I don't have much time to play video games nowadays, but it doesn't mean I don't want the latest and greatest, right? So yeah, it's been a whole year and I finally was able to get one directly from Sony from their website. So it's guaranteed to come in. Uh, <laughs> and guys, I'm just excited about that. <laughs> So this escalated quickly, but it's necessary, okay? All this crap has to come out in order to get the radiator out. And as you can see, the radiator has been removed. All we have here is the condenser. So yeah, it's pretty much time to put the new one in. 
now i did end up moving the cooler it was right here in front and i just kind of snake it around here and zip tied it up here so it's out of the way because when we're moving the old one these lines were in a way just made it way more difficult and i don't want it to be in a way when i'm trying to install the new one the problem is um right here so you can see these tabs right here i don't know if they're going to interfere with me laying the cooler back in place because that tab is going to come out like right here so i don't know if this is a good idea to try to put it over here in front afterwards or should i just leave it in front and try to work around the hoses i don't know guys i'm gonna try it out see if it works if it doesn't then i'll just redo it and do it the way it came out as you can see i got the new radiator in place and it went in a lot easier than it came out because i was able to get that uh, cooler put aside and just move it up here like i showed you guys the problem is once the radiator is in place you can see all this is in a way it's impossible to get that cooler back on this side with the radiator here so the easiest thing was to simply just take the clamps off of the hoses remove the cooler completely put the cooler back in place and i just fed the lines through over here and that's it we'll put two new clamps on it and reconnect everything on this side simple as that um the radiator went in pretty smooth it doesn't look like any damage happened to the radiator so it should be all set and when i removed the old radiator i noticed that that bolt that goes right there was missing and the bolt that goes over here was also missing and i'm figuring like who was in here and why are these bolts missing the only thing i could think of is the car was an accident i think the frame is like twisted the body's twisted and this kind of reinforces everything right here you see how it connects one end to the other from here to there well when i removed the bolt for that thing it like sprung out like it was under a lot of tension so yeah i think the reason why these bolts might have been left out by someone is because nothing lines up anymore so because of the accident i mean what are you gonna do this car is one nail in a tire short of going to the junkyard you get what i'm saying it is what it is if if those i'm gonna try but if those bolts don't line up where i could put a brand new bolt in there it's a done deal it's just gonna have to sit there how the original one was sitting there so i got the radiator sitting in its lower mount everything fell into place there and this one lined up perfectly so i found a bolt in my collection and i just ran it in and it fit perfectly threaded in nicely so that's all nice and solid you can see radiator does not move but this side doesn't line up at all just as i suspected remember the car was hit on this side so that doesn't line up but one thing i did notice on the radiator that came out is it didn't have that bushing right there i'm guessing it fell out so what that does is without that bushing it allows this side of the radiator to just bounce around and if you guys remember the radiator was leaking on this side so it's really important that even though we don't have a, a way to bolt down this side of the radiator via that bushing it's still important that the bushing stays in place because it does provide some sort of dampening and so that the radiator is not just bouncing off of the metal frame right here so what i did is so that that bushing doesn't fall out is i drilled a hole right next to it as you can see and i ran a zip tie in it to hold that bushing in place to make sure it doesn't come out and guys it's nice and solid even if it does move at least it has something to hit which is the rubber bushing and it won't hit on the tank of the actual radiator so it's a million times better than how it came in it's pretty much nice and solid now so let me finish putting all of this back together and there we have it everything is put back together everything is buttoned up and plugged in i'm gonna go ahead and leave the grill off of it for now because i want to check for leaks once i get the engine running if everything looks good then i'll put the grill back on it but we have to obviously add coolant brand new coolant uh, we have to add power steering fluid because when i disconnected the cooler we lost some of the fluid from here so we got to fill up the power steering and also we lost some trans fluid when i disconnected these lines so antifreeze trans fluid power steering fluid so the system is completely filled with brand new antifreeze you can see i got my pressure tester on and we are just about at that max and you can see it's holding it's not dropping before you couldn't even get nowhere near that psi of a uh, pressure before it started just pouring out from down here and you can see nothing is dripping not a single drip of anything it's looking really good guys and as you can see it's still holding all right so this thing is pretty much all set uh bled the cooling system got nice hot air blowing out the vents topped off the power steering fluid so the pump is no longer whining it's nice and quiet i got the engine and the trans up to temperature and then i topped off the trans fluid 
I had to readjust the latch because initially the hood wouldn't latch down. So I just moved the latch up a little bit and now it's uh, the hood is latching just fine now. That's why I put the grill back on it. And normally I would take it out for a test drive, but there's no reason to test drive this car. I mean, I fixed what it's here for. That radiator was just dumping out coolant and now we don't have a single drip. It holds pressure. It's good. There's really no reason to test drive this thing. And, you know, considering that... Uh, the, like the ball joints and tie rods on this thing are so bad you can hear them just clunking around all over the place I don't want to be driving this car when one of those ball joints or tie rods decides to fail uh, So there's no reason to drive it We fix what it came here for And that's going to be it The owner can come pick it up So we're back with this Jeep It's probably two or three weeks later I can't remember But it's here for the tie rods And here's a better shot of this with the wheel off I'm trying to keep the camera as steady as I can and there we have it the new tie rod is installed everything's tightened down got the cotter pin on it and this thing is nice and solid now doesn't want to move nothing just how it should be uh, so what I'm going to do is just go ahead knock out the front right side and that'll be it for this one I was supposed to do an oil change but I asked the owner about it and she's like no we're just doing the tie rod so I guess she decided to skip the oil change we are back with this Ford Explorer, Eddie Bauer edition. Remember the last time this thing was here, uh, it was because gasoline was leaking underneath the truck every time they try to fill up the tank. And I told them that the gas tank was actually broken and needs to be replaced. Now I didn't do the job, so they took it to a shop. And yeah, it all got fixed. Which honestly guys, I was really surprised. So there it goes right there. Yeah, I was really surprised because I thought they were just going to say, screw it, we'll junk the car. You know, this old piece of crap isn't worth putting money into it, but they just keep on dumping money into it. Uh, the guy won't let go of it for some reason. I'm sure there's a deeper reason of why he's holding on to it, because I was working on his daughter's car uh, not so long ago. And she told me, I know why he doesn't want to get rid of the truck. She said, but I'm not going to say anything. It's not my uh, place to be talking about it. It's a personal thing. So he's got, he's got some other personal reasons on why he won't get rid of this truck, you know, to each their own. But today it's here for uh, basically a power steering leak and the steering feels a little jerky. So this is the power steering pump right here. We can see the big mess underneath it of just caked on old fluid that's been leaking and dripping. And I took the cap off of the reservoir right here. Just trying to get a sample for you guys. You can see that fluid is uh, pretty dark. Alright, so I decided to come underneath the truck and just look at things. And look at this, guys. You can see all this stuff right here. I was not expecting this. You know, when they told me there's a leak, I thought they just meant like they noticed what I noticed up top. But this is a lot leaking. Um, you know, everything is just completely soaked. Where is it coming from? I don't know. At this point, just looking at this, it's going to be really hard to pinpoint where this leak is coming from unless it's like stupid obvious and it's just spraying it out, which I doubt because I would have noticed it while it was running before I even started recording. But I'm going to go ahead and start the engine back up and we'll come down here have a look. But it could very well be a power steering hose or line that's leaking. So this is just going to keep escalating. So I took off the cover from up here to get a little bit more space. And um, guys, I don't know, it's, it's hard to make a call on this, but... It may just be the lines leaking. I don't know. It's hard to tell. I'm not going to be able to get a good close up for you guys. But those lines right there, they're like a braided. They have like some sort of like a braided shielding over it. It almost looks like a, like a cloth. Those are super common to start seeping and leaking over time. So that just may be the problem here that the lines are leaking themselves. So I'm going to talk to the owner and... Tell them, hey, what well, we could try first instead of just going for the pump, which is going to be expensive. I'm going to see if they want to try just replacing the lines, uh, the power steering lines, whichever ones we could get to. And even this hose that goes from the reservoir up to the pump over here, uh, because I'm pretty sure that's an original part and look how nasty it looks. So, yeah, before throwing a pump at this thing, let's see if, uh, if the lines are fixed. But of course, I'm going to give the owner the option if they want to change the lines and the pump and everything all together. And let's do it. Uh, but if they're trying to save money, and who isn't trying to save money, right? I want to fix it the most expensive way possible, said nobody ever. So from underneath the truck, I could see fluid dripping off of this line right here. You could see where that uh, 
a tie down for line is completely destroyed there's like no more rubber bushing right there it's basically the rubber line rubbing against whatever metal bracket is there so i could see a drip coming right from behind this thing and while the engine is running i was having a close look underneath the power steering pulley itself like right down here just to see if i could see anything dripping out of the pump itself and i don't see anything um so I honestly think the leak is coming from the lines and the fact that I see stuff like this where the rubber bushing is completely destroyed. It just allows for the power steering hose to rub and chafe and eventually it's going to rupture the line and that's what's going on here. That's why we have a leak. And to prove my point, if we come underneath the truck once again. So here goes all the lines, right? And yeah, they all look dirty and wet and moist. But which one stands out? Look at them really good. Which one of these lines stands up? To me, looks like this one right here. You can see how these are more like uh, just saturated from fluid that's been spraying on them. But this one looks like it's just straight up dripping fluid off of it. And what line is that? That's the line that I was pointing at up there that's actually dripping itself. If we go on Rock Auto, we could get this line. We could even get this small line coming uh, like from the steering gear. It's got this hard line. It's got that bend. And then it goes into a rubber tube. You can actually get that off of Rock Auto. And I'm debating on whether, you know, should we just get the lines and just kind of replace them while we're in there? Or don't fix what ain't broken, right? Should we just replace the one that looks like it's leaking? I think that's the route we're going to go here. As, as much as I want to just replace all the lines... It just makes no sense on a truck like this. You know what I mean? Just fix what's broken and move on. So that's it for looking at this truck. I'm going to go ahead and tell the owner that I'd recommend replacing that main line going down to the to the uh, steering rack. As well as this hose right here. And of course, once we do the job, the system will get new power steering fluid and we can get all this junk out of here. So I'll keep you guys updated on whether he brings the truck back for me to fix it or if he takes it to a shop. Really, I don't care. It's a few weeks later and we are back with this Ford Explorer and we have some parts for the power steering hoses. We got this one right here, which is gonna replace that elbow right below the reservoir right there. And then we got the small line on the bottom that I said I wouldn't replace, but you know what guys, it was just so dirt cheap and why not? We're gonna go in there anyway. And a little bit of maintenance. Let's just consider it maintenance, all right? And then here goes the main line coming from the actual pump down to the bottom of uh the car so that's it we got three pieces we have to install um let me start digging into this stuff and start taking all this stuff apart all right so we are into the meat and the potatoes here guys let's see we got all of the main stuff out the way i got this hose removed the one that goes to the tank and as you can see i got the pulley out of the way i had to remove the fan now initially i tried to leave the fan and the cowl in place and that wasn't going to happen. So I had to put the serpentine back on it so I could, you know, use the belt to hold tension on the fan clutch while I hit it with my uh, pneumatic clutch tool. Got that removed. And then the next thing that was a hurdle was the actual pulley itself for the power steering pump. Even though I removed the three bolts, it was stuck onto the shaft pretty good because of rust. So I had to heat up the pulley around here and then start hitting it with my uh, soft face mallet and lightly tap it off until it walked off of the shaft uh, so yeah that sucks of course I made sure to not go crazy on it to not damage the pump any more than it already is well I got all of this stuff out of the way let me go ahead and do a little bit of cleaning back here you can see all this stuff is just caked on I know it doesn't really matter if I clean it it's not gonna make a difference on how um, anything performs here but yeah, we have access to it now, so might as well do a little bit of cleaning. So I got the main line off of the car, but not all of it. As you can see, I had to cut that end off. And that line comes with like a Teflon O-ring kind of. And off of the power steering pump, this is what that Teflon O-ring looked like. It was just like disintegrated. Now as far as... I'm... Oh, I just ran into my toolbox. Oh, I just... oh that hurts. As far as right here, you can see where I cut the line off. And it's because this fitting right here, I was able to crack it free, but I wasn't able to get any turns out of it. It's just the tools I have. I mean, really, there isn't any tools that could get in there and do this. 
So the only option I had was to go ahead and cut the line and with the line now cut, I could just put a 18 millimeter socket on it, just like that, and start removing it. Like I said in my last video, where we were dealing with power steering lines, with great power comes great, don't be stupid. Do what makes sense. If you have to cut something, go ahead and cut it. You're replacing it anyway. Don't fight with it. So once I get this fitting out of here, then we could go ahead and get to this one up here, which is the one that's right behind it. But it's a little bit easier to get to. Well, it's a, it's a lot of bit easier to get to if we uh, remove this one out of the way first. Now we could use our crow's foot once again. And get inside of here. Let's see if there's a crack free. Oh, there we go. Thought I was gonna bust a knuckle for a second. Now off of this piece, since we have a new hose, I'm just gonna go ahead and remove that clamp and then I'll probably slice open the hose with a razor blade just so we don't have to fight getting it off of there, make it a little bit easier. I didn't even have to cut that rubber piece because as soon as I took that clamp off, the rubber just slid right off of the cooler. So that was nice. As you can see, I got the new line installed, at least the upper one. And what I found out very quickly is with that thing threaded into where it has to go, there was no way in hell this thing was gonna get connected because that length, the, the hose is just way too short and you don't have enough wiggle room to go ahead and get that thing out of cooler. So what I had to do was, of course, you always wanna thread in this side first. You don't wanna risk cross-threading it. So I got that part threaded in first and then I had to unbolt the oil cooler. You can see it's got one bolt right there and then the other one is right there. So I unbolted the oil cooler I slid it over and then I slid it onto the hose. I hope that makes sense. Uh, so yeah, it's really, I can't stress it enough. Make sure you get the threads on whatever you're threading into, get that done first and then deal with whatever consequences you have to deal with afterwards. So I got the other line uh, loosely threaded on on both sides. You can see that's threaded in and the one down there is also threaded in. Now one thing is that the new hose did not come with this bracket pre-installed. So I had to remove it off of the old hose and it's supposed to have like a rubber insulator so it doesn't dig into the hose but as you can see the original one is destroyed which is where i was assuming this thing was leaking from and for all i know it could be so anyway we couldn't use this all right so what i did is i found just a random rubber hose i had around here grabbed about an inch and a half of it and i cut a slice in it and i put it over the new hose as you can see and then I crimped on the original bracket over it. You're supposed to put it on and it's got a crimp on the back side which holds it in place. And now, now I could go ahead and get this thing mounted where it belongs so that the hose isn't in the way and it's not gonna interfere with the fan or touch anything. And there we have it. All the new parts are in place. Everything's tightened down. Now let's be honest guys. How many people would have gone out of their way to make this for the bracket and get that thing right back where it belongs. A lot of people would just said, screw it. You know what? It's tightened up here. It's tightened down there. That hose isn't gonna go anywhere. Cause I'm not gonna lie. That took me like an extra 15, maybe 20 minutes trying to figure out what I was gonna do with this. And I think it came out really nice and it's holding it nice and solid. So yeah, most people would just skip it. And it just, that's the type of laziness that just, I'm not gonna get into it guys. <laughs> You guys know what I'm trying to say, okay? The little things like that, just do it. If that's how it was from factory, just do it. I think we need Shia LaBeouf here to just be like, just do it. <laughs> ah. All right guys, so uh, let me go ahead and wrap this up and put this mess of a car back together. Look at all my tools, my beautiful Knipex tools. Ah, it's such a shame to see them like this, but what are you gonna do? That's what they're for, to put into work, right? So I put together the uh, bare minimum just so I could get the car running. Obviously the fan is not on it yet, but I just did this so I could check for leaks. And I already filled up the power steering system so it's completely topped off. Power steering works both ways. I don't hear the pump whining or making any type of noise. And of course, let's go check for leaks. I already looked at it. I don't see anything leaking, but I'll show you guys.
So all of that up there looks good. I don't see anything leaking, dripping, seeping, nothing. And our connections down here. Everything looks really good. There's nothing dripping off of that. Over here as well, all of that looks good. Don't worry that bolt is not touching the rubber hose. It looks like it, but it's not. No leaks at all. So at this point, guys, it's looking really good. I'm happy with it so far. I think I showed you guys enough to prove that it's no longer leaking. So I'm gonna go ahead and call that a win. Tomorrow, I'll go ahead and wrap this job up because it's ready like 9 p.m. And as you can see, the power steering still works nice and smooth. Don't worry, I do have the garage door open. I'm not killing myself inside of here. It has a ton of problems. I mean, if you jacked up the car and just start checking ball joints, um, bushings, tie rods, everything's just messed up on this thing. The transmission is jerky as hell. Um, I don't know why he keeps dumping money into this truck. It's crazy. I just, it just blows my mind. But in any case, you know, he did pay to get the uh, the fuel tank replaced and get all that fixed. And now it's no longer dumping power steering fluid everywhere. The power steering works nice and smooth. So I don't know, guys. I'm going to go ahead and uh, park it. And that's it. He could come pick up his truck. What they had just noticed while driving is you can probably see that the windshield is cracked. If you look very closely, there's actually like clear packing tape going across the windshield right where the crack is at. I've never seen someone try to remedy a crack on a windshield with clear packing tape. <laughs> That's funny. Does it really help? I have no idea.